Hi everybody, welcome back to Dance of Mary NYC where we talk about any and all things point shoes. In this month's episode, I thought I would give you some great tips for what to put in a point shoe kit for beginners. So let's get started. The truth is, point shoes can be really complicated, especially for a beginner. You need stitch kits, you need cushions, you need band-aids, you need uh, so many things. So what I thought I'd do is break it down to give you some suggestions for a small point shoe kit that would fit in your dance bag. This could be separate than like say your makeup kit or your hair tools and such. So let's get started with that. I have a kit that I take with me to fittings and I had a co-worker at Freed who used to call this my war kit. Uh, his name was Daquan and he would say, he'd say M, M to the C or he'd say MC, do you need your war kit? And I thought, oh my God, that's the greatest name for so it. So choose your bag. You could use say one of these mesh bags that you get from the point shoe companies or you could even use a bag like this. I got this one is for fruits and vegetables. So, so you may want to use something like that. That's inexpensive and it's mesh. Uh, you can see things really easily through it. So you, you may want to use that. Uh, you may want to even go smaller. This is kind of like a, a pencil bag. My stepson gave me this. So it's a pencil bag and it's got a little bit of mesh on it. And this is a good size too. You may even want to get a little fancier and go with something that has a fun statement. And it's also one of those school pencil pen things. And it's got all these great pockets that may work for you. But today I thought I would use this one. I love this one. A friend of mine brought this back from Japan and uh, I love the fact that it's kind of can be up and open and you can kind of see in it really easily and I also love the drawstrings. So let's open this up and see how many things we can get in it but still make it pretty portable. My first suggestion is all point shoe companies use these bags, right? So, uh, or most of them use uh, some kind of a plastic bag and we're really trying to be environmentally conscious. So we want to try and recycle our plastic bags, right? You can always ask them to use sustainable packaging, but if they don't, then get creative and use this for recycling. So in these bags, I have various things. So I've got a whole nother bag here from another point shoe company. And I put in here in the first one, I got really fun with the cushions. Now I like to give people lots of options. So say if you're a young student and you're away from home at a summer program, or maybe you're at your dance studio all day and they don't have a lot of things there for you to use, or there's not a drugstore really close, you need to be very self-sufficient. And then also when it comes to performances, you need to be self-sufficient. So I put in there uh, some heel grippers in case you're wearing some kind of footwear where it slides on the heel. And then I did a big kind of a variety of band-aids. Now, you don't want to just have one size of band-aids. You want to have a variety of band-aids. And the reason is you never know what kind of little blister or little rubbing. I've gotten the weirdest kind of rubbing on the sides of my feet just from doing certain kind of choreography. So make sure you do get a bunch of different sizes and put that in there. And then the other thing I suggest is these non-latex uh, makeup wedges. Right, and you can get them in a variety of shape. I just happen to get the triangular kind. So if they're non-latex, you don't have to worry about allergies, but they are great. If all of a sudden you notice that your first and your second toe or your fourth and your fifth toe are kind of crossing each other and you're feeling like, oh, is that gonna be a corn or am I gonna rub into a, you know, lose my skin? This will help and it takes two seconds to get it in and out of your toes. So I would suggest putting that in there. I would also suggest putting in a little bit of mole skin or mole foam. This does great. You can put it underneath your heel. You can line the back of your point shoe. You can even take this stuff, the thinner version. This is a slightly thicker version, but you can take the thinner version and cut it up and put it on. If you have a hook that's uncomfortable on your costume, sometimes, you know, the hooks will kind of scratch you. You can put a little piece there. So, so have that in your kit. And now another thing that I put in this bag when I put with my cushions and my band-aids were these alcohol prep pads. They're tiny, they're portable, they're easy to carry. You can replace them. They're really inexpensive and they are great in case you get like something rubbing or if you get a blister right away and you want to clean it off right away before you put a band-aid on there or say you scrape up, you'll scrape up your hands sometimes partnering or you can even like if you touch set pieces or, or props sometimes and you get like, ooh, what's going on with my hand, right? So this is a great way to clean off everything without having to worry about having a whole big bottle of rubbing alcohol. And then lastly, we covered this also in a previous episode. These are just foam insoles for shoes. I love having these in an extra big size. So get the largest size and get the cheapest version. And then you can cut them in case you need to put them in the bottom of the shoes. Because sometimes if you're working with a company or a group and they provide the shoes, those shoes 
are not exactly your size, so you just have to make them work. So that would be one thing, and you put that in your recycle bag, and then you're gonna go ahead and put that in your kit. Then I have another recycle bag, and we get really fun with the tools in this one. So in this one, I put all kinds of things. I have a pair of uh, jewelry pliers here. So jewelry pliers are really inexpensive. You can get like five or six of them. You, you can really get find these things anywhere. They are so good if a, if a nail starts to come out in a shoe and you have to go ahead and yank it out the rest of the way. They're also good if you have to kind of take, and once again, I know I'm talking about costumes, but this does happen. If you have a costume and the hooks aren't quite right, you can bend a hook so it's not like poking you in the back or the spine or something. But I just love having these uh, jewelry pliers. And the other thing about them is they're not so sharp that they're going to hurt you or poke through a bag, right? And you could have uh, scissors. You Actually, scissors are completely necessary. You really have to have a really good pair of scissors. Now, you can have your large pair of scissors, but I always suggest manicure scissors. And the reason that I suggest manicure scissors is they have this wonderful curved blade and the curve in the blade is really good for getting into the stitches in point shoes because point shoes are kind of small and there's lots of corners in them and there's lots of tiny stitches. So you can get in and out of them really quickly. And also if you stitched your ribbons closed for like say a show, you can clip them really easily. And then also you may want to get a seam ripper again for the same thing so that you can get the stitches out really quickly. I would say that the scissors are a little more versatile. And of course I have lots of extra needles with extra thread. And I know maybe teachers aren't going to approve of this, but you do want to have a couple of safety pins. And the reason is you never know a ribbon might pop out before class, before a show or something. And if you don't have time to quick stitch it, you may need to safety pin it. Now for class, that's not okay. If you have time to stitch your shoes, you need to stitch your shoes. But if you don't, this works great in a pinch. Or if, you know, maybe you've had your costume, again, pop out on stage. And so you would need, need that. So I'm going to put that again in my bag that I'm recycling. I'm going to put that into my kit. Now, another great suggestion is even if you don't need them initially, I love these tip cushions for your big toe. You don't need to buy a name brand or anything. They sell these everywhere. And they're so wonderful. They have, it's like a sock for your toe. They have gel on the inside and cushion on the outside. And oh my goodness, if you have a problem with the second toe or the first toe, or if you're getting a lot of rubbing on the pinky toe, these come in all different sizes. They are a lifesaver. So say if you, you know, I got, I got a very bad uh, thing ripped off on my big toe once and I, I was able to get through the act of the ballet by putting on something like this and you can trim them to fit. And I suggest you have an extra pair in there because ooh, you never know when you need them. Now, different size toe pads. I would suggest, especially if you're somebody that's young and growing, get three different size toe pads, small, medium, large, so that if you get into class one time, you can adjust it. Maybe you get to day five of your summer dance camp and you're like, what is going on? I cannot even get my point shoes on my feet because they're swollen because you've done so much dancing. So get yourself some different sizes and put them in there in your point shoe kit. You'll be happy that you did. Then for, for tape. Now it's really up to you. Some people like paper tape, masking tape, I just happen to like sports tape, so I'm going to put a little bit of sports tape in there, but I am also going to get some duct tape in there, and duct tape will really save your life. There was a ballet that I was doing, and the shoe kind of blew apart, and I really literally slapped some duct tape on it and got through the rest of the thing. I mean, it wasn't this crazy color, but if you're using it on the inside of the shoe, then go ahead and use something fun. Arnica gel. Arnica gel is holistic. It doesn't smell. It doesn't stain anything. You could use the cream. There's also a cream, but I just happen to prefer the gel. And you can use this gel on sore muscles, on bruises. It really, really helps. You can use it before class. You can use it after class. And I just can't even tell you enough. And you don't have to worry about that crazy smell that some of the other things do. You know, you always go into a dance room and you're like, somebody's wearing some kind of a muscle balm right but arnica is really just great and it's it's just not that expensive and uh i can't even say enough good things about it so i would suggest having a, a tube this is a large tube there are smaller tubes like that and there is also cream again i just don't suggest the oil in case it spills but you don't you don't want it to spill in your bag then 
if it's okay. Now, most of the time on most good dance floors, they do not allow you to use rosin. Some of them they do, but many times they don't allow you to use rosin, but you could put in your kit rosin spray. So basically rosin spray, and I'll just use a little bit on my hand, is just, it's just like any hairspray, but it will dry and it's rosin, so it's a little bit sticky. This is a lifesaver if you have a heel that keeps slipping off or if your ribbons keep coming out. Um, I've even had guys that will put it sometimes on their hands if they have a lot of heavy lifting to do and they have a slippery costume. It's not so great for pirouettes, but with the lifting, you know how the guys want to grip their hands. So this is really great. You know, I don't suggest putting it all over your point shoes because if you put too much of this stuff on, it gets a buildup and then it actually gets slicker. But it is good in a pinch and it is really good if you are having issues with your point shoes slipping. So I'm almost full up now. I only have a few more things left. I will suggest if you need to have some kind of a point shoe glue with you. So cyanoacrylate, we talked about how to glue point shoes in a previous episode. And normally I say, don't pick an expensive brand or don't pick a name brand. I'm going to suggest if you're putting it in your point shoe kit, get it so that it's in one of these cases, right? Why do you need it in this case? Because you may spill it. Everybody I know has a point shoe glue story. So if you can't find it in the case, then I would go ahead and leave it at home. But if you can find it in this case, it's not a very big tube at all, but you can use it in a pinch. You could use it on the shank. You can use it in the tip. You can use it on the edges of the point shoes. You can even use it to kind of seal up threads again. If so, if something's unraveling, it, it's good for that. And it's small and very portable. But once again, be very, very careful with this because what it does is it'll eat through the fabric. It'll eat through your dance bag. It'll eat through the point shoes. It'll eat through the shoes. So just be very careful. If you're unsure, just leave it at home. But I would say if you've got the tube, you're a-okay. And then I always suggest, I call this magical ballet spray. It's not magic. It's just like say about 75% rubbing alcohol and 25% water. Or if you wanted to use a little bit of witch hazel in there too. And if you wanted to use maybe a drop or two of essential oil, not too much of that. I like lavender, so I always put a little bit of lavender in mine. This spray is great for spraying the sides of the point shoes. It's great for spraying on the heels, spray it on the ball of foot. It's also great if you do have rosin spray on your hands and you want to get the sticky off, you just go like this and then all of a sudden your hands aren't sticky anymore. Or if you want to use it as a disinfectant on your hands, of course, you can use that. And Oh, mine smells good. It smells like lavender. So you don't need to use that essential oil, but I do suggest that you get one with a lid. And if you're unsure about this one too, because they can kind of spill leave that one at home as well or in your dance locker but if you want to take it in with your kit i suggest putting it in your kit just make sure that the lid's sealed really well and then finally what we have is we're going to do a stitch kit but we're not going to buy one of those ones we're going to make our own stitch kit so it was so simple i just got needle and thread and then i always suggest a cotton thread i use a brand called coats that you can find that at any fabric store and then i use really really thick needles uh, I don't like polyester thread. It will tend to, to rip shred really easily. And then I always suggest this for my young students, take a couple extra pieces of elastic. You never know if your elastic is going to kind of burn out on you and kind of uh, shred. Sometimes you'll need an extra piece of elastic on some footwear just to stitch it on so it stays on a little better. Uh, I've had to put elastic in like say emergency elastic in a cuff of a costume because it kept sliding down on my arm. So it's just really really good. Whatever kind of elastic you want to use and then you just get a little cup to put it in. One of these little plastic cups. You don't have to purchase one from one of those dancewear companies you can make your own and that's really all you need and so, voila i made it all fit everything fit in my point shoe kit and it's not heavy so i'm going to close it up and then i can store it in my dance bag and i'm ready to go for performances summer camps dance school anything that you like well i hope you like my suggestions for what to put in a point shoe kit for beginners now, don't forget to click if you like something, subscribe, and share this episode with others. And leave your comments below. Let us know what you like to put in your point shoe kits. And thanks for watching.